Welcome to a special edition of Watch Me Code. I was recently working on an application that I build called Signalief. It's a podcast audio hosting service. And in the process of working on this, I realized that I needed to upgrade from Express version 3 to Express version 4. And I sat down and did this, and while it turned out to not be super difficult, it wasn't exactly intuitive, even though there is a pretty good guide out here. So I wanted to quickly roll back this code here, which I've already done, and uh, show you how I went through this process, record the process, and put this up and available so that other people who are looking to migrate from Express 3 to version 4 can see how a fairly large application has been able to do this with a fairly minimal impact, quite honestly. It's, it's a, a, a pretty easy process overall. It's just a, a number of steps involved. So to get things rolling here, I do have my local development environment open. And even though this does say dev.signalleaf.com, this is actually just uh, pointing to my local host, colon 3000. I have some redirects uh, put in place using Nginx behind the scenes for various reasons. But I've got the code set up here, um, and it actually is running on port 3000 of my local host. Uh, the application itself is fairly large. I've got a number of different sites, actually. actually. Uh, I've got the web app itself. Um, I've got a uh, admin website. I've got a media server. I've got this queue handlers, which handles uh, message queue uh, processing in the background. So there's a good number of things going on here. And the site itself does have a fair number of routers as well. Uh, one of the things that I noticed about doing this upgrade, though, is I typically don't have to actually touch my routers. My routers are not necessarily the greatest routers in the world. They are using the old Express V3 style here where I'm just doing exports and adding functions directly. But I, in, in the process of upgrading uh, over the weekend, I noticed that I didn't have to touch the routers themselves. It still works the way V3 routers uh, wanted to work for the most part. There's a couple of minor tweaks that I had to make, but I'm basically going to do this upgrade without touching the routers because I wanted to get this thing moving forward as quickly as possible and not have to spend an insane amount of time doing the upgrade for all of my routers that I have. So the main focus of the work is going to be on the app.js file here where you have all your typical Express V3 stuff going on with a whole bunch of configuration of other pieces of middleware. And then also in the package.json file here, where we'll be upgrading a lot of the individual packages that are used inside of this application. All right, so I'm going to start by heading over to the Express migration guides here. There's a, a guide here on GitHub for migrating from version 3 to version 4, and it's a pretty good little guide. Uh, it's more of a what to change than how or why to change, though. It, it, it provides some good information on the things that have changed and some notes that you probably want to pay attention to. But honestly, I didn't use this document all that much. For the most part, I stuck with the Moving to Express 4 guide on ExpressJS.com. So just head over to expressjs.com, go to the guides here, and moving to Express 4 is where I'm currently sitting. So the major things that I need to do are, of course, install and update to the latest version of Express, but then also update the middleware that I'm using. And that's really where this guide became more important. The, the guide over on GitHub, migrating from 3 to 4x, does show me a little bit of how to get some of the um, the latest Express up to date, but it didn't really show me a whole lot, so I'm just going to ignore that, like I said before. Uh, looking through here, I'm going to scroll down quite a ways here and find there was a place that gave me a couple of commands that I wanted to start running initially in order to get all of the correct NPM versions, all of the correct module versions for Express up and running. So the basic process uh, is to run NPM install and get all of these individual modules updated here. So I'm going to head over to my command line and I've got the app running. I'm going to go ahead and stop that. I don't need two console windows open, so I'll close that one. And I'm going to run this npm install, uh, just copy and paste. And you'll notice that I'm copying and pasting twice 
because if you try to copy this whole thing, um, you'll end up with a line break right here and it will install these without saving them and then you have to go and modify this. And So just copy and paste this twice, but get it all in the same line. That way you can get everything that you need all at once. And so what this is doing basically is updating my package.json file with the core of what we actually need. Now I'm, I've installed these and these are most of what I need, but I'm gonna duplicate some of these as I go through the rest of this process. But this is basically getting Express v4 up and running. And if I open up my uh, application code here, you see that it wanted me to reload. And if I look, I now have Express version four installed instead of Express version three. And some of these other things also changed as well, including the addition of body parser and method override and Morgan and some of these other packages that you need for Express version four. So having done that, if I try to run the application now, run node app.js, things are gonna start failing. It's, it's not gonna work very well. Um, there's a couple of things that we need to do in order to get this up and running, including changes to the app.js file uh, and creating a uh, bin slash www file that we typically see in Express version four applications. So I'm gonna scroll, uh, see, I don't really see any info on creating that um, www file, the bin file inside of here. Oh, here we go. Uh, that's the Express version three file version four package JSON and app.js. So it doesn't really talk about using the bin, fo bin folder and www file in this migration guide, which I find a little bit frustrating, honestly. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna open up one of my other applications that I have that's already on Express version four and cheat a little bit. So I'm gonna start, I actually have this um, admin application running on Express version four. So what I'm gonna do is start by creating the necessary folder inside of my uh, web application. So I'll just make their web slash bin, go back over to my editor, refresh so I can see that folder there. And then I'm gonna add a www file to that. And that file doesn't have an extension on it. It's gonna have some commands for um, Unix shells here. Now, if you're on a Windows system, this www is probably gonna be like a batch file or a .cmd file or something. So you'll wanna copy and paste your uh, www file appropriately. And if you don't have one of these to cheat with, you can just do uh, an NPM install express generator and then generate a new website shell and copy and paste that out of there. But I'm gonna start by pasting all of this into mine. Now it doesn't have any syntax highlighting at the moment because I haven't, because Vim didn't recognize the type of file that it was originally, but if I close this and then open it up again, Vim will see that I am using Node and it will recognize this as JavaScript. I also need to change the permissions on this. So I'm gonna ch own, or actually I'm gonna ch mod plus x on the current file. And that's going to cause it to be executable now, which will allow me to just do dot slash bin slash www, which I typically don't do anyways, but I wanna set the permissions anyways, because sometimes I do do it that way. Just depends on the individual application. All right, so I've got a couple of things in here from the admin folder, admin application that I don't necessarily need set up. I'm going to delete a couple things. I actually do need my database connection, but I'll show you, I'll show you that in a little bit. Um, I'm gonna take this out for the moment. I'm gonna change this back to port 3000 because I know in my app.js, I am using port 3000. If I find that right here. So since I'm setting up my bin www, I'm going to delete the port from here. And I now have that set up here. I'm gonna go back into 
my app.js and I'm going to come down to the bottom where I have my startup running already. And there's a couple of things going on. There's this db.connect and there's this rabbit.configure. This is all part of my startup for this application. So I'm going to cut that out of there and I'm going to change the app.js to say module.exports equals app. And I like to do this style of comments in order to create, to visually create these differentiating sections in my files. Of course, you don't have to do that. Go back over to my www file. I'm going to paste that in place, the information that I had just cut. And I know that I have my DB library already required here, so I'm going to leave that in place. I do know that I also need my RabbitMQ information. So I'm going to do var rabbit equals require waskily. That's the, the RabbitMQ library that I use for this application. Uh, I think that's, uh, there are a few more things, a couple of libraries for the application that I need. So I need my analytics and my Stripe integration. So I'll do var analytics. And var stripe int. And these are libraries that are specific to my application here in the lib folder. The, the DB library, the analytics library, the stripe int library. And if you're interested in knowing how I'm requiring things from this lib folder without using dot dot slash everywhere, and having that kind of annoyance, uh, check out watchmego.net and my Express.js series where I do show you how to organize business logic in this manner. So that's at sub.watchmego.net and organizing business logic and Express applications, episode 62, will show you how to, or how to get your lib folder to be able to be required like this without using dot dot slash everywhere. See if there's anything else in here. I got both of those. I have my port being set. Um, the start server function is right there. EPA is my environment configuration that I have loaded. All right, that should work. Actually, I don't need this set immediate function in there. I don't know why that's there. I noticed that while I was upgrading over the weekend as well. So I'm going to kill that. Save this. Let's go see what happens if I try to run this. Well, I can't run the app.js now. I have to run the bin www file. So let's try that. I right, cannot find module debug. All right. So in my package.json, I don't have that debug module, but I know that's one that is typically used in Express v4. So I'm going to install that. Oops. Uh, debug dash dash save. All right, having done that, my package.json file changed, so I'll reload it. Try running the application again. And we're getting an error saying that middleware needs to be installed, uh, or most middleware is no longer bundled with Express and has to be installed separately. Okay, so this is where we get to the point that the migration guide is going to help more than it has previously. You saw that I didn't really get a lot of help from this yet, other than copying pasting these uh, installation bits that it also happened to miss the debug module with. But from here, I'll be able to get some more help by looking at the middleware list that I need to upgrade. So here, it's toward the top of the, of the document. It has a list of middleware what was used previously in Express 3 and what's used now in Express version 4. So I'm going to go ahead and start installing these and get those upgraded to Express 4. All right, so I'm going to head back over to the command line here. And actually, before I do that, I'm going to copy and paste a little. Well, I guess I'm not going to copy and paste. Uh, what I need to do essentially is convert these express.bodyparser over to bodyparser plus multer. And I'm pretty sure that the previous NPM installs that I did updated those already. 
And I can see body parser is there and multer is there as well. So I don't need to reinstall those. And so I'm going to head over to my app.js and I'm going to look for body parser, which I see right here. So I'm going to take this body parser line and I'm going to change it a little bit. I'm going to go up here to my require statements and right under express, I'm going to say var body parser equals require body parser. And having done that, I will change this to not be express.bodyParser. I do want to go back over here and look at the documentation to see if there's anything that I'm missing. Uh, strict mode, inflate limit, those are a bunch of different options. I don't necessarily need any of these options, I don't think. Here are some examples. Okay, so here are the things that I do typically see inside of my Express 4 applications, the URL encoded, extended false, and the body parser.json. So the way I just did it a moment ago isn't gonna work, and I do remember seeing that now. So I'm gonna change this, and you can leave those comments in there if you want to. So now I have my body parser updated. Um, and instead of going through the rest of this document in the order that they show, I think we're going to go through in the order that I see in my application instead. It'll be just a little bit easier for me to do that. Uh, method override. This is used when you're using a, a browser that doesn't support HTTP verbs like delete and other modern HTTP verbs like that. I don't actually use any of those features. I'm not using the delete verb anywhere or any of the extended HTTP verbs like that. So instead of replacing that with the multer, so, or I guess instead of replacing that with method override, the method override update, I'm not going to include method override inside of my application because I don't need it. Um, I did see that this multer thing up here was also recommended when replacing body parser. I don't think I'm using this either, multi-part form data, um, which would be good if you're doing file uploads inside of your application. I'm not doing any file uploads in my application, so I'm going to leave Multair out of this as well with my body parser. So up next then, fave icon is one that I need to modify. So for the fave icon, there is a new module called serve fave icon. I don't know if I got that in my package.json. I did. Okay, that's good. So I don't need to reinstall that. I will just require it up here. serve fave icon come back down to where this is being used and it does need me to pass something into the method if I remember correctly so let me look at that documentation real quick yeah it wants me to pass in the location of the icon itself and I'm actually I actually have that in my public directory. So I'm going to use the same kind of path.join that I'm seeing. And I'll pass in fave icon.ico as a third parameter to the path.join. And I'll verify that I do have fave icon.ico in my public folder, which I do. So fave icon should be good now. And back over to the list. I'm going to close out some of these. Move that window. Next up is express.logger, which is replaced by this Morgan thing. I guess that's a logging framework. So I will look at the Morgan documentation. And I do remember seeing that one in my app in my package.json already. I'll head back to the code. Go look at the docs for this. Yeah, 
And I'm not, okay, here we go, examples. All right. So app.use Morgan combined. I don't know what that means. All right, that's fine. I'll just do it that way because that's what they want me to do in the examples. All right. So I will require Morgan into this. And then down below, instead of express.logger, I will do app.use Morgan combined. Delete the old logger. Morgan combine, Morgan combine. All right, so that should set up my logger appropriately. I already got the body parser taken care of. Cookie parser, I definitely need to replace that one. So cookie parser is replaced with cookie parser appropriately. And that one did not get installed with the previous NPM install. So I'm going to do that NPM install cookie parser dash dash save, of course, because I want to save it to my package.json. Missed the reload there. All right, so we have cookie parser. Let's look at the docs for cookie parser. Let's just use cookie parser. That's easy enough. Well, I do have a cookie secret. Okay, so cookie parser can uh, the cookie parser function does take a secret as a parameter. That's good because I am using a cookie secret, which you should also be doing because you want your cookies to be stored hashed and not in plain text. So I will require cookie parser into here. Got that done. Cookie parser is in place. Express session. I also need to replace that. And express session is replaced with express session. All right. Let's see if the session made it in. Yes, the session did make it. All right, so I will require session. And this will change from express.session to just session, I believe. Check that documentation just to make sure. Yeah, app.use session, pass in your options. Oh, I do need to add these two options. Those are not included. The resave and the uninitialized. Oops, there we go. Organize this a little. And I'm using a Mongo store as well for my session storage. I do need to update that slightly. So Mongo store was previously pulling in Express. And if I look at Express Mongo store, connect Mongo store, that's what it is. That's the library I'm using. Yeah, connect Mongo store. The documentation for V3 of this shows me passing an express like I'm doing here, but that's going to produce another one of those uh, middleware errors. I need to actually pass in session in express version four. So I've got session required already, which means I can just change this to say session. And then Mongo story will still work appropriately. All right, and the rest of this is custom application middleware and setup and stuff like that. So I think at this point I'm good with most of these. Oh, did I replace that static one? I don't think I did actually. Yeah, express.static. I need to replace that as well. I missed one. So that's replaced with serve static. Make sure that's in my package.json file, which it's not. All right. So grab that. Add 
add that to my requires. And I'll check the documentation for that. <laughs> Looks like it pretty much just needs a folder location. I, I think that's like the previous one as well. I'll change this to serve static. And I'll leave the path.join name public because I prefer that instead of just a hard-coded path name. And I think at this point should be good to go in terms of the packages. So now I'm going to try to run this again. I'll run web, I'll run node web bin www and see what happens. Right, body parser is not defined. So line 35, I must have mistakenly mistyped that. Body parse, there we go. Try this again. App.router is deprecated. All right, so this is another place where the migration guide is gonna come into play. So the error I'm getting is app.router app is deprecated. Please see the three X to four X migration which is exactly what I'm going to do after I close a few of these windows. So the express.router class, that's the new version four routing. Search for app.router real quick. So here we go in under the process down here toward the bottom eh, about Two thirds of the way through. Make the following changes to the app.js. The HTTP module is no longer required. Am I using that? Yes, I am. All right, I can delete that. Um, those I've already updated. That's my middleware. No longer need the to load app.router. So find that app.router use, which I know I do have in here. Right there, so I would delete that. Make sure the middleware is loaded in the right order. Load error handler after loading the app routes. Yes, middleware being loaded in the right order is very important. Again, you can check out watchmeco.net in the ExpressJS series to learn more about middleware. Let me just find my error handlers here. Okay, so I did. I got rid of this error handler and actually have my own custom error handler in place, so that's fine. I did that previously in the application itself. So I'm just gonna delete that commented outline since I'm not using it anyways. So we no longer need to use create server. Am I using create server? Not in this file. That might be in the bin. Uh, I am using it. Okay. Uh, okay, so HTTP.createServer. That's where things are changing now. So that gets changed to app.listen instead of HTTP.createServer. So this was in the bin www file. And this is where I had HTTP.createServer passing in the app. Um, now it's just app.listen. That looks like it's basically it for that process. Let's see what happens if we try to run this. Apps is not defined. Um, app.js line 104. So I'll go back to my app.js, look at line 104. Oops, my module.export. All right, fix that. And it looks like the application is actually starting at this point. So I'm going to go back to my browser, refresh my localhost, and there it is. It's running. The application is working. That didn't seem to be too terribly difficult. Let's see if the routes are generally working. Now, parts of this application are not going to work at the moment. For example, I'll have a problem down here below this bad gateway. This is because I have not yet 
upgraded my media server. Uh, that is something else that I will also do. But right now I'm just looking at the main website, which does appear to be working at this point. So that's good. All my routes seem to be going. Oops, didn't mean to do that. But all my routes seem to be, seem to be working. Everything basically looks good at this point. So I now have upgraded my application from Express version 3 to Express version 4, mostly using this guide found on the expressjs.com site. Again, I read a few things on this GitHub page, but it didn't really help me a whole lot. Most of the information I got was out of the Express guide right here. Now, as I said before, I do have a lot of routers in here and I haven't yet touched these routers. And for this screencast, I'm not gonna bother touching these routers. This is a whole host of things to do in and of itself. Uh, there's a lot of changes that I want to make using the new router class inside of ExpressJS version four. And you can see some info about the new router class down here in this guide. Um, also, once you get to the point where you actually have this router class being used, the way that they organize things here isn't very good, quite honestly. It gets out of hand pretty quickly. You really can't see how your routes are organized very well by using the router setup that they offer right here. So I would recommend checking out, again, watchmecode.net and the Express.js series that I have going. One of the first uh, episodes that I did for Express.js was on routes and route organization. So episode 58 will show you an appropriate way that is more scalable for handling your routes inside of Express v4. There's also some additional information on route parameters and subroutes and even error handling within your routes inside of Express v4 applications. So definitely check out Watch Me Code. It's a paid subscription service for 14 bucks a month. I will also sometime soon uh, have available a Express.js series that you'll be able to download and purchase without a subscription. But if you'd like to get those screencasts right now and be able to update your Express v4 application to a more manageable and scalable structure, head over to watchmecode.net and you can get a subscription for 14 bucks and be able to get access to all of these existing Express.js routes and other screencasts. And from there, be able to use all the latest and greatest in modern tools and modules and everything else with Express v4. Thanks for watching this special edition of Watch Me Code, a live look at migrating from Express version 3 to Express version 4 using my SignalLeaf system, which by the way, if you're interested, check out SignalLeaf.com for podcast audio hosting. Thanks again and happy JavaScripting.